right, so um, next section we're going to look at for this week is 2.1, okay, and this will be the last section that, that we do. Okay, we'll focus the rest of the time just on 2.1. Uh, I've split 2.1 into three parts. Uh, if we get to all three parts, then we do. If we only get to two parts of it, then that's all we're going to get to. All right. So this section is on uh, what an angle is and how we measure it. Okay. Degrees is one way that most people are familiar with measuring an angle. Uh, but there's another unit we'll talk about besides degrees. And the real point of this section is how do you convert between degrees and the other unit we're going to talk about. And there's a formula uh, to do that. But before we talk about how to convert between one type of measurement to another, let's just talk about, in general, what an angle is. So if you want to sketch an angle, okay, not an angle that's part of a shape, but just an angle all by itself. It's made up of a ray. So a ray has a starting point that we call a vertex. And it continues in one direction forever. There's a ray. Now, if you take another ray, say like that, and you have those two rays start at the same vertex, like that, now you've created an angle. Okay, so we put two rays together with a common starting point, and that gives us an angle. Now, that's an angle that's drawn all you know, by itself. Okay, it's not part of a shape. Technically, if we draw something like this, we also call these three things angles as well. But these angles are not made up of rays because they're, they're in a shape. Um, what do we call the sides of, of a triangle? A ray would continue on forever. These don't. So anybody know what we call those three things? Yeah? Line segments? Yeah, they're just segments of a line, right? They're just parts of a line. So technically an angle can also be where two line segments meet in a, in a polygon. But if you're going to draw an angle all by itself, it's generally drawn as two rays. Okay. And there's another example of of an angle. There's an arrow. See it? And that's, that's an angle. So in that angle, we have two sides. Okay? These two sides have, have names called the initial side and the terminal side. And the way you know which side is which is Pretend like you're standing, you know, in between the two rays. Not, not outside, but inside. If you're in between the two rays and you rotate counterclockwise, where you end up, the side that you would hit, that's the terminal side. That's where you would end. The side that you started at when you rotated is the initial. Same idea if I had, say, something like this. Here's an angle, just in a different position. If you go between the rays and rotate counterclockwise, where you start is the initial, and where you end is the term. Okay, so you can, you can rotate that pretty much any, any way you want. Now, we're going to have an even easier way to tell which side is initial and which side is terminal in a minute. Usually, you don't have the initial side sticking like 
up like that. Generally, you want the initial side to always point a certain way. And if we do that, then it's even easier to tell which side is initial. So I'll, I'll show you how you normally want to put the initial side. And that's actually how you generally want to do it. The initial side usually is horizontal, and it points to the right. So you set that side first, and then you set your terminal side you know, wherever you need it. Depends on how big of an angle you want to draw. So let me show you another example um, of drawing an angle with an initial and a terminal side, but I'm going to do it in a, uh, in a program. So here's an angle that I just drew. The initial side I can't move, it always stays horizontal, but the terminal side I can put it and put that wherever I want. And if you notice, there's really two directions that you can rotate to move the terminal side. I can either rotate it counterclockwise, and if I do that, notice what kind of number I get, or I can go clockwise. And if I go clockwise, I get a negative angle. So depending on which way the rotation is, is measured, clockwise or counterclockwise, it would control whether we're talking about a negative angle or a positive angle. Now given the choice, positive angles are generally what we want to deal with. Okay, positive numbers, it's always easier than working with negatives. So, if you rotate in a counterclockwise direction, okay, the way I just showed you, that gives you a positive angle. If you rotate in a clockwise direction, that's a negative angle. I can show you this in the diagram. I can go back to it and show you, but you can go around more than once as well. So you can have an angle that's even bigger than 360 or smaller than negative 360. So here's an example going around more than once. So when I get back to where I started, I'm at 360. That's one, what we call one revolution. And now that represents going around more than once. That's a 421 degree angle. Now you might notice there's this other number at the bottom here. Um, sometimes it has a pi in it, sometimes it's a decimal. Uh, kind of depends. We'll talk about that. Um, does anybody know what that bottom number is. Right, well, that's the other way we can measure an angle besides degrees. So I'll uh, show you by the end of class, how do you get 8.45 from 484? Okay, what do you do? All right, so what we really want, though, is a way that if I asked you to sketch, say, a 45-degree angle, we want everyone's angle to kind of look the same. We don't want some of them turned or upside down. So what we're going to do is kind of agree on a way that we draw things that's kind of a standard way to draw an angle. And that's called standard position. If you draw an angle in what we call standard position, it makes the initial side and terminal side very easy to figure out. Because in standard position, the initial side is always horizontal and it points to the right. Or another way to say that is it's on the positive x-axis. And the other thing when we draw an angle in standard position is pretend like you have graph paper 
and you drew an xy axis, you put the vertex of the angle right at the origin. So there's a picture of an angle in standard position. Okay, so it has to meet those two requirements. The vertex is at the origin, and the initial side is on the positive x-axis. Now, what if I did this? Is that angle still in standard position? Well, Tyler, what do you think? No. no, what's wrong with it? That's not the origin. Right, it's not at the origin. The initial side is still on the positive x-axis, so it still, still meets that. But it doesn't have the vertex at the origin. All right, so let me put that back. Uh, now what if I did something like this? Just take that, put that there. Okay, is that standard position? Okay, Jason? It is not. No, what's wrong with it now? Um, the initial side is not on the x-axis. Yeah, initial side is not on the x-axis. Vertex is at the origin, but the initial side is not at the x-axis. So when we draw our angle in standard position, that is what it looks like. Any uh, questions on that? All right, so that's kind of the background about angles, what we call the two sides, the rays, initial terminal, and then drawing an angle in a certain way. All the angles that I drew in this program, they're all in standard position. I can't move the initial side, and I can't move the vertex. So they're all standard position. Any questions on that? All right. So now we're going to take a look at that other number that was coming up in that box. That other number represents what we call radians. How many people have um, ever heard of radians or used radians before? Okay. So radians is just a different way to measure an angle. Okay? It's a little different than degrees. And the goal, what we want to figure out, is how to convert between the two. All right, let's um, start with something about degrees and revolutions. I think I said it earlier, but does anybody know how many revolutions, or how many degrees are in one revolution? How many degrees to go all the way around the circle? Yep, uh, Emma? 360. 360. All right, so one revolution equals 360 degrees. That's a, that's a true fact, right? Does anybody disagree with that? So now that I know this fact, that would be enough information to convert degrees to revolutions. Okay, the way I could do it is like this. Start with our true fact on the left. And now on the right, you could make another fraction. And you could fill in whatever you want to know. Let's say you wanted to know how many degrees in five and a half revolutions. All I have to do is put revolutions in the top, because it was in the top on the left. And now I can cross multiply 360 times 5 and a half, and that would tell me how many degrees in 5 and a half revolutions. But the whole key to being able to do something like this was this. You had to already know a fact that was true. Okay? If you don't have this fact to start with, then you're stuck. Okay, so we have to know a fact that's already true. Any fact. Okay, it doesn't have to be this fact. Like if you wanted to convert revolutions to degrees, what if I did this? Is that a true fact? Yeah. Two revolutions is 720 degrees? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could use this fact to do it. But this is a little nicer because it's reduced. Generally, if you want to convert between two things, you like to have the number one in your fraction. 
you're going to tell somebody how to convert between uh, seconds and minutes, you'd probably tell them there's 60 seconds in a minute. That's what you can use to convert. You could tell them that there's 600 seconds in 10 minutes. It's true, but it's not as simple as just saying 60, 60 seconds in one minute. So this is what we have to figure out, okay? what in, what's in this box. But we have to figure it out for degrees and radians. How many radians in how many degrees? So that, that's what I want to try to figure out. So by the end, we're going to know this question mark. And then we'll be able to convert from degrees to radians. We start out um, with this diagram. So what I've drawn here is what we call a central angle, just an angle inside a circle. The vertex of the angle is right at the center, and I've labeled the two rays R. Now, those two rays start at the center, and they go right to the edge of the circle. So why do you think I label them R? Yeah. They're the radius. Yeah, they're the radius. Okay, they're the radius. And each one of them is exactly the same because they start from the center and go to the edge. Now, this ray hits the edge of the circle right there. This ray hits the edge of the circle right there. If you connect the two, you get what's called an arc. An arc is just a part of a circle. Now, this arc could come out bigger than the radius. For example, you don't have to redraw this, but if I did it, let's say like this, I think now you can tell that arc is a lot bigger than the radius. So the arc can come out bigger than the radius. The arc could also come out smaller than the radius. I did something like this. Now, the arc is only that tiny little section. That's a lot smaller. But another thing that could happen is the arc could come out exactly the same size as the radius. It'd be pretty rare for that to happen, but it, it could. And if the length of that arc in red came out to exactly the same size as the radius, then what you've just drawn is an angle that is exactly one radian. That's the definition of a radian. It's when you draw an angle in a circle, and the length of this intercepted arc comes out exactly the same size as the length of the radius. And that's a fact that we're going to use to help us more tomorrow when we come up with another formula. But for today, it gives you kind of a visual of what a radian looks like. You can kind of visualize that. OK, if I drew an angle and the arc was the same size as the radius, then I would have one radian. If the arc is bigger than the radius, then your angle is bigger than one radian. If the arc is smaller than your radius, then it's smaller than one radian. Doesn't really help us to convert between radians and degrees, but what it does do is give you kind of an image in your head you can picture when you think of a radian. And that sketches, I'd say it's pretty much to scale. That's pretty close. So that, that's about what one radian would look like. It's a little more than 45 degrees. And by the end of today, you can figure out exactly what it is. Okay. All right, so how do we change between radians and degrees? Well, we have to start with something. We can't, we can't have zero information about radians and degrees and try to figure out a formula. If you start with nothing, you can't really figure out how to do it. So I'm going to give you a fact that you can start with, and we'll build off this to figure out how to do it. All right, so 
here is a fact. And it says that if you measure an angle in radians, okay, inside the, in a circle, if you measure an angle in radians, it will come out exactly the same as something else in the circle. If you measure an angle in radians, it will come out exactly the same as the length of an arc on what's called a unit circle. So that, that's a special circle. And I'll, I'll show you what that is. All that a unit circle is, is a circle that has a radius of one. That's called a unit circle. So let me draw, let me draw a picture of that, that sentence and show you what's happening. All right. So let's say that's my circle. And it has a radius of one. Let me draw an angle in the circle. There you go. There's my angle. Now, if you measure this angle in radians, from there to there, okay. let's say um, this angle, I don't know, I'm just going to make up a number, it's definitely bigger than one radian. Let's say it came out to 1.6, no, just making up a number. Let's say the angle was 1.6. Well, if you measure an angle in radians, it will come out equal to the length of the arc. Here's the length of the arc. The length of the arc would also be 1.6. On this special size circle, these two things are always the same. If the angle was 2.5, then the size of the arc would be 2.5. If the angle was 0.6, then the length of the arc would be 0.6. Those two numbers are always the same. Any question on, on that idea? Now, it's not true on any circle. It has to be a circle with this size radius. It has to be radius of 1. So now, I want to think about an arc that's even bigger. Here's my initial side. Here's my terminal side. So I want to think about this arc. So that's an arc that's so big, it goes all the way around the circle. So there's my angle. It goes all the way around this side. Well, we don't know how many radians it takes to go all the way around the circle. But we don't need to figure that out. We can figure out something else that's the same as, as that. We can figure out this. If we can figure out the size of the arc that goes all the way around the circle, that's exactly the same as the size of the number of radians to go all the way around the circle. So all we have to do is figure out the length of this arc and it will be exactly the same as the number of radians to go all the way around the circle, because those two things always come out the same. So this is an arc that's so big it takes up the whole circle. What do we call, or does anybody know what you call an arc that takes up an entire circle? It's like the whole circle. What do you, what do you call that? Yeah? A circle? Uh, what about the circle? It's the... Uh, not the diameter, but we're getting there. We're using we're using words about circles, so we want to kind of continue. All right. Anyone have um, another guess? What we call again? This would be called an arc if it was just a small section. 
But we're looking at the whole section now. So that's called the, uh, yep. Yeah. Maybe the circumference. That's the circumference. So what this means is if we can find the circumference of this circle, that will tell us this number. But that number is exactly the same as that number. And that's the number that we want. We want to know how big the angle is in radians to go all the way around the circle. So let's find the length of the arc, and then it will be exactly the same as the size of the angle, because those two numbers are always the same. So let's find the circumference. What's the uh, formula for the circumference? You remember yet? Uh, isn't it like 2 times radius squared times 5? Uh, you're close. You're very close. It is 2 times. Anyone else? Yep, go ahead, uh, Tyler. 2 times pi times radius squared. Um, so that's what Jason said. 2. So. Pi r squared is the area of a circle. So when you square the radius, you get the area. You just want to use 2 pi r, no squared. That's your formula for the circumference. And in our particular case, uh, what's the radius of this circle? 1. 1. So the circumference is 2 pi times 1, which is just 2 pi. Now you know that number. The size of this arc is 2 pi. So what would be the size of the angle that goes all the way around the circle? 2 pi. It would be the same number. That's how many radians it takes to go all the way around the circle. 2 pi. So that's not a question mark anymore. Now, you have a fact that relates a certain amount of degrees to a certain amount of radians. We know that in 360 degrees, there are 2 pi radians. So based on knowing that fact, we can convert any amount of radians to degrees. Just like I showed you before, you can convert any amount of revolutions to degrees. So let's write that down. 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. Now, that's again, that's kind of like saying in 10 minutes there's 600 seconds. OK, it's true. But if we can make these numbers a little smaller, that would be nice. Um, so does anybody see what you could divide both sides by? And it would at least make, make it a little smaller. Yeah? Two. two. So if 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, then 180 degrees is 1 pi radians. All right, now, when you give some, that's better. That's better in the way of saying, all right, well, in five minutes, there's 300 seconds. OK, that's a little smaller. But when you give someone a conversion, what number did I usually say you want to have in it? A one. A one. Okay, usually you want to have a one in it somewhere. Well, you have two choices. You could either turn this side into a one or this side. Um, let's turn this side into a one first. What would you have to divide each side by to turn the left-hand side into a one? One eight. Divide by 180. Divide by 180. Just 180. And when you do that on the left, now you have a formula that says 1 degree equals, I don't know what that is, I'm just going to leave it, pi over 180 radians. So there's a formula for 1 degree. And we can use that formula to figure out any number of degrees to radians. Um, let's, say, let's say instead of converting one degree to radians, you wanted to convert two degrees. What could you multiply each side of this equation by? And it would give you a formula for two degrees on the left. Two. two. Don't, don't, you don't have to write this part. The, the black part is what's important. But if you multiply by two, 
and you multiply by 2, and you did the math out on the right, now you have a formula for 2 degrees. Oh, what if you wanted a formula for 5 degrees? I said to you, convert 5 degrees to radians. What could you multiply each side by here? 5. I'll multiply the left by 5. Now it says 5 degrees equals, and you'd have a calculation on the right, you could type into your calculator. 5 times pi over 180. It's not important what number you're converting. What's important is what's in black, the pi over 180. Whatever number you want to change from degrees to radians, you do two things. You multiply that number by pi, and then you divide that number by 180. Those are the two steps to change from degrees to radians. Multiply the number you want to convert by pi, and divide by 180. Doesn't matter what the number is, 1, 2, 5, negative 6. You always do these two steps to change degrees to radians. It's basically just filling a number in that red box every time. And you multiply by pi, and then you divide by 180. Now, that gives you a formula to change degrees to radians. We also want to be able to convert the other way, okay? radians to degrees. And that'll be the last thing that we uh, look at for today, and we'll do a few examples. Everybody have those two steps? Okay. So let me go back up. Uh, let me write this down again. 180 degrees equals pi radians. Now, to convert the other way, instead of getting a 1 on the left, let's get a 1 on the right. Okay, again, you give someone a conversion, the simplest way to do it is to put a 1 in it. What could I divide both sides by um, that would give me a 1 on the right? Yep, pi. Divide by pi. And divide by pi. Now you have a formula that says 1 radian equals 180 divided by pi degrees. So I told you earlier you'd be able to figure out exactly how many degrees are in 1 radian. I think I told you it was a little more than 45. Well, we could type it in and we can see. 180 divided by pi is about 52, uh, 57.29. Not critical we remember that. We can always type it in, but that's exactly what 1 radian is. A little over 57 degrees. All right, now let's do the uh, same thing I did before. That's for one radian. Let's say I wanted a formula for two radians. What would I multiply each side by? Yep. Um, Katie? Uh, two. Two. Yep. Multiply each side by two. Times two. Times two. Now you've got a calculation you could do out, and it would tell you what two radians equals. What if, what if I wanted a formula for, I don't know, 7 radians? Yeah. Multiply by 7. Now the right-hand side says 7 radians equals, and on the left-hand side you have a calculation you could do out. So it doesn't matter what number you put in that box. What does matter is what's next to it. To convert from a radian to a degree, you always do two things. You multiply the number by 180, and then you divide the number by pi. You multiply by 180, divide by pi. I think I have that written down right here. Multiply by 180, divide by pi. So it's very similar, converting between radians, degrees, or the other way. And I think that's something that can actually confuse you, because one of them you multiply by 180, one of them you divide by 180. 
One's multiply by pi, one's divide by pi. We've got to remember which way is which. Well, I have a way to remember which way is which, if you can just remember something very simple. When we start converting between radians and degrees, I just want you to kind of connect this idea in your head. When I say degrees, the number I want you to think is 180. Degrees, think 180. Degrees, 180. Kind of get that in your head. When I say radians, I want you to think pi. So I want you to connect radians with pi, and I want you to connect degrees with the number 180. If you can remember those two things, all of this will become automatic. Let's try an example. Okay. Convert 60 degrees to radians. So to do this, we always multiply by a fraction. You have two choices, pi over 180, 180 over pi. It's going to be one of those two. Think of 60 as a fraction. So the 60 degrees is in the top. Think about where the degree symbol would have to go in this fraction to cancel it out. Because I don't want the degrees in the final answer. I want degrees to disappear. So where would the degree symbol have to go to cancel out the degree symbol that's already there? Yeah? You have to go in the bottom. Anytime you multiply fractions, if you want something to cancel, you've got to have it in the top and in the bottom. So the degree symbol would go in the bottom. Radian is going to go in the top. Now we just have to figure out what number goes with degrees. What number did I say to always think of when you think degrees? 180. And what number do you think of when you think radians? Pi. And that's how you can figure out that it's pi over 180 without memorizing it as pi over 180. All right, so degrees in the top, degrees in the bottom cancels. Um, there's nothing else here that cancels, but there is something that reduces. What number goes into 60 and 180? 10. 10, so if we divide by 10, we get 6 over 18. And is there any number that goes into 6 and 18? 6. We could have done 60. We could have done 60, yeah. 6 goes into itself once, and 6 goes into 18 three times. Kind of like reducing square roots. If you want to do a small number first and then do it again, you can. Or just find the biggest number right away. All right, so final answer we get here is 1 times pi divided by 1 times 3. And that's the answer. Now, did anybody look at that and say he didn't write something down that I thought he was going to write on that answer? Is there anything there that you thought I was going to write that I didn't? How about my label? What's my what's my label on that pi over three? Yep. Yeah? Radians. It's radians. Well, why didn't I write it? Because you don't. You don't, when we're talking about angles, the only label you ever put on an angle is the degree symbol. The only reason I put RAD here was for you to get used to the idea of pi being radians and 180 being degrees. From now on, I'm not even going to write RAD right here. Okay. RAD is there. It's going to think of it as being invisible, okay. just like it is here. You never label angles unless you want it to be in degrees. And the other thing is, a lot of times they're going to have you leave it just like that. You don't even have to find what that is. Just leave it. That's called leaving your answer in terms of pi. You don't have to do it out. Let's try uh, another one. 150 degrees. All right, so where is degrees going to go this time to cancel out the degrees that's already there? Yep, bottom. 
radians is in the top. I pretend like it's written, but that's invisible. Um, Noah, what number do we always uh, connect with degrees? 180. 180? And Jason, the number that we use for radians? Pi. Pi? Degrees cancels. And do you want to see the biggest number that goes into 150 and 180? I mean, you could do 2, you could do 5, you could do 10. 30. There's a bigger one. 30. Yeah, 30 times 5 is 150. 30 times 6 is 180. So anyone think they can tell me my final answer here? Five pi over six. Yep, five pi over six. Should I put RAD on it? No. No, don't put RAD. And when you do the homework, you won't see RAD on the problems either. Okay, questions on it? Great. Um, let's try one with a negative. Negative doesn't really change anything, other than your final answer will have a negative symbol. But do it the same way. So, uh, Natalie, what am I going to multiply by in the top? And then what am I going to multiply by in the bottom? Top is pi. Yep. And bottom is 180 degrees. That's gone. And Brian, what um, what number goes into 45 and 180? Um, I want to say 15, but I don't think it goes into 180. Uh, no, 15 does. Uh, but we could go with an even bigger number. If we do 15, we're just going to have to oh, do it again. Oh, 45 itself? Yeah. 45 times 1 is 45. And 45 times mm -hmm. how much? 4. Four. So final answer is negative 1 pi divided by 4. Okay, questions on that one? Okay, so all of these problems, we left the answer as an exact answer in terms of pi. Okay, that's, that's exact. Let's do one where we round. Let's do, yeah, 107. Directions here, same directions that we had up above, convert to radians. But then on this one, we're also going to round to two decimal places. Exact same steps. Pi over 1e. The difference this time, that, that's approximately equal to, that, that's pretty bad. The difference this time is, don't worry about reducing it. Just type the whole thing into the calculator and see what you get. Alright. How do you think I'm going to type in this? Just the part that I circled. Okay, so it does mean 3.14. And it's actually on the board, on the calculator right now. But does anybody know a different way that I could type that in besides 3.14 and why I might want to use that way instead of 3.14? Yep. There's usually a pi button on calculators. Yeah, we want to use the pi button and why would we do it? Because it will give you the most accurate number. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more accurate than 3.14. So anytime you see a calculation you have to do with pi, use the pi button. Uh, if you're not sure where it is, uh, I can show you. But on mine, I have to press second pi and then divide by 180. Right, so that's what I typed in. And I get approximately, if we round that to 2, 1.87, no label. We know it's radiance. If it wasn't, it would have a little degree symbol on it. Any questions uh, on converting that way, degree to rate?
Let's finish up by uh, doing a couple of the other way. We'll do radiant to degrees. I'll put RAD on it this time, just because it's the first one. But eventually, you've got to get used to not, not seeing that. All right, so we've got pi over 6. We've got the radians right next to pi. Radians is in the top. Um, so how about John? Where, where would radians go? Because we want to cancel it out. So we get degrees. The golden bottom. Radiance is going to go in the bottom. Degrees goes in the top. And Emma, uh, what number do we always connect with degrees? 180. 180. And Dylan, the number that we always put with radiance? Pi. Pi. Okay. And what's going to cancel out here? Pi, yeah, that's gone. What else is gone? The radius is gone. Now we can reduce um, 180 divided by 6. What, what is 180 divided by 6? Yeah? 30. 30. 30 what? Well, look at what's left on our degrees. Degrees, that's the radians is gone. Do I need to put the degree symbol or can I just leave it off? Yeah, I need to put it. Without it, you just wrote 30 radians. With it, now you wrote 30 degrees. Let's try, try one more like that and then we'll do a um, one way round and then that'll be it. How about, Caitlin, can you tell me um, what I would multiply by to convert that to degrees? 180. Yep, 180. And what do we divide by? Pi. Pi. So pi is gone. RAD is gone this time, but it's invisible. So radiance, radiance. And justice, anything there that I can um, reduce? Well, is there any number in the top uh, that's divisible by a number in the bottom? Uh, 180 by 2. Yeah. What do you get if you divide 182 90. into 180? Uh, 90. 90. So let's divide 2 into itself. You get 1. That you get 90. Degree symbol still sits right there. Nothing happened to that. All right. Um, so, Jade, what would be my answer here? 270 degrees. Yep. 3 times 90 is 270 with a degree symbol. Perfect. Any questions on that one? Right, let's finish up with one where we round to two decimal places. So let's convert three radians. Same, uh, same directions I had at the top, but I'm also going to add to round it. They will tell you in the homework and on the test whether or not you should round it or leave it with pi. Okay. All right, so same deal. We're going to multiply by what we were doing before, 180 over pi. Now this one, let me do it. Uh, let me do it with the pi button the way you should, and then let me do it with three point one four, and let's see if it makes a difference to two decimal places. Okay, let's see. All right. So the way you should do it: three times one eighty, that gives you five hundred and forty. Divide by pi. Uh, oops. Pi. That's one hundred seventy one point eight nine. Okay, and if I'm looking for you to round it to two decimal places, 0.89 is what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, let's do 3.14 instead of pi. 
So take 540, which is 3 times 180, and divide by 3.14. To two decimal places, did I get the same thing? No, it's not even like I got 88 and 0.87. I got 0.88 and 0.97. That's not the same thing. So if I'm looking for you to go to two decimal places and you didn't use the pi, that would be wrong. Okay? So just make sure you use the pi button. All right. So any questions on how to convert between degrees and radians? So that's um, 2.1 part 1. So homework tonight has uh, some of each type. Convert degrees to radians with a decimal and with pi. And then convert radians to degrees. Some with a decimal and then some with pi. Okay, so we'll take a look at that um, tomorrow. And then tomorrow I'll update you with uh, what I think the plan will be for the test this week. Okay. It's either going to be Thursday or Friday. If it's Thursday, we'll just cut a lesson out. If it's Friday, then we won't cut that lesson out.